How's it going everyone? Session here. Welcome back to Who the F Did I Marry? We're entering part eight. Just to kind of quickly recap a lot of what's been going on so far. Uh, the ex-husband and her had just got a new house um, in a part of Georgia. It was a seven bedroom house. The price for that house was 699000 He had offered to pay a cashier's check in full to cover the cost and make the offer on the house. All of the documentation regarding this new house is now going to her first before it goes over to the husband because she didn't really trust or understand, um, you know, just his side of the story and what he was kind of going through and explain to her. So she, of course, wanted to kind of cover uh, all bases, making sure that everything that was going on process wise was actually accurate for her to actually understand what they're going through. Um and so the the mystery question now, of course, amongst a bunch of others is like he had put down, he got like a loan mortgage for a house for $750,000. But at the same time, he apparently had an offshore account from doing arena football and like work and that sort of thing and is using that money apparently to cover the house. I'm hoping this time around she explains that that weird situation that it was with the uh, the loan as well as with the offshore account to cover the cost for the house. Let's check out part eight. All right, part eight of who the fuck did I marry? So we submitted an offer on the house in Smyrna. I sent it over to Scott, our realtor. And next day comes, Scott asks if we can take a phone call. So he calls us and tells us that the offer was not accepted and the builder did not do a counter offer. Oh. We don't exactly know um why um we don't exactly know why he didn't accept it but the bottom line is that we figured out later on that he didn't want to finish the basement so the offer was not accepted okay. the house fell through i was okay with that because again i knew he had put in an offer so we continued looking at other houses we found another house um, in Smyrna that he really liked. Um, I I'm so confused because the housing, also a really beautiful house, but the housing that they, they're switching between, like, there's various different, like, levels to this housing situation. So that's actually interesting. It's an off, let me see. Five by five and a half bath. Okay. Uh, is there a price mark on this thing? I don't see the price exactly for this, but... Okay. I thought that it was way too big for just the two of us. Um, and so the price of this home was much higher than the 750000 that Chase had approved for the mortgage. Mm -hmm. So what he explained to me was that he was willing to do the $750,000 mortgage. And he was also willing to put a significant amount of the money and savings on the house. Oh, I mean, I guess like, yeah, but it still doesn't really explain like, how do you have the Chase mortgage loan for the for the housing, but then like you also have money to just cover the cost for it too sort of thing? I don't really... Which meant that he was now comfortable going from 750000 up to about 900000 Again, his his whole explanation was, I have the money where I can put down a substantial down payment bring down the price of the home and then basically mortgage the rest of it so that was now the plan i was not comfortable with a home <laughs> over nine hundred thousand dollars um but again keep in mind i saw the chase paperwork so i was like i just feel more comfortable sticking at the seven hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. mark that's what you were approved for let's go with that <sighs> By this point, this is now fall of 2020. Um, we had been talking about marriage. I had my ring. Um, he had made VP at the company. And again, he was calling me every day from work. Six, um, six months at this point. The, I need to kind of explain how the company was ran because when you think VP, you would think he would be in an office. It was a condiment company. So they actually were producing the condiments, and I'm not saying the name of the company on purpose, but they were producing the condiments um, in this particular plant location. So a lot of times he would simply tell me that he walked the floor um, checking in with his subordinates, basically. Now, 
how did he go to work? For the most part, at this point, he left before I woke up. That's, However, that is so scary, actually. Like, if she wakes up and he's just gone. Um, let me see. Pretty much, he wore dress pants, um, kind of like a deep, a dark navy blue cargo pant, and he had a polo shirt with the company logo on it. Hmm. What I saw a lot of times is that he would not wear the polo shirt to work. He would wear like a company T-shirt. Mm -hmm. He would wear rubber sole shoes and the um, navy blue cargo pants. I didn't think it was a uniform, but it definitely, it reminded me of what someone would wear when I worked at Amazon, if you're going to be doing manual labor. Mm -hmm. He didn't go to work sloppy looking at all, but it definitely was not suit and tie. Nowhere near suit and tie. Hmm. Um, it is fair to note that outside of work, he was a man who he loved to dress. He loved to wear the latest Jordans. He loved to collect watches. He collected a lot of Invicta watches. Um, Invicta? Okay. He, he loved to collect hats. He wore hats, baseball caps everywhere because he didn't like the shape of his head. Um, so in terms of how he dressed casually, the man... He could dress. Um, in terms of how he dressed for work, yeah, he didn't dress like a VP. But his excuse was, I'm constantly walking the production floor, and I can't be in a suit and tie walking the production floor where they're creating the condiments that we're selling. So by this point, again, this is fall. We're still looking at houses. Um, we're still touring houses as much as we can because it is covid um, we had found another house that we really liked and a house that I really, truly wanted to put an offer in on. Mm -hmm. This was now going to be the second house that we put an offer on. He put in the uh, the asking price, I believe, was about 700000 He put in under asking um, an offer for about 650000 I'm guessing, but I'll try to find the house and put it. On this and put it on the story um the reason that that house fell through <sighs> we found out that the home was sitting on a septic tank we found out that the septic tank had an issue and it would have taken about 15 to twenty thousand dollars to fix the septic tank mm -hmm. the sellers were not willing to fix the septic tank personally i didn't really care for the house that much i'm the one who was like i don't really want it so even though we put an offer in, we had 24 hours where we could uh, pull our offer back. And so we did. Once we found out, I believe it was in the disclosure. And if you're a realtor, please feel free to tell me if I'm using the wrong terminology. But I believe it was in the disclosure that they told us the septic tank needs to be replaced. That's when I was like, nah, I don't, I don't want that house. Um, so we pulled out. The house fell through, and so I was fine with it because, again, I was heavily involved. I saw him sign the offer. I knew every step of what was going on. Mm -hmm. Our real estate agent, Scott, was amazing, but you will see in, when I get to it where he made a mistake as a real estate agent. So hmm. house number two fell through. Um, we then moved on saw a few more houses and then we get to house number three i'm going to pause talking about the houses because now i need to introduce what happened with the cars the cars okay okay so this one pretty much sums up the fact that they were trying to get a second house offering the dream house that she had in her mind that price was too high for ended up falling through because they didn't want to complete the basement the basement was incomplete and then they refused to move into the house with an incomplete basement so the offer was rejected it wasn't even countered offered it was just completely rejected and so now they looked at the next house and then the issue was the septic tank that she didn't even want to deal with because you know it wasn't really up to her to you know want it basically so 
and again same thing like he's he's um still providing the offer for the housing as well the interesting thing that definitely comes into play with this one is the fact that she literally reiterates constantly that he's a vp that he got promoted to vp but in terms of his dress wear right like he wears something that's on a expensive but like casual setting but he doesn't dress professionally enough to give off the the uh, you know the vibes of a vp so for her to actually acknowledge that he wears like warehouse attire basically is also very interesting because it just seems like he's it it sounds like he's lying about what he does career wise also i mean i think of course the whole thing is a bunch of lies right but but again the 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 issue is that a lot of the things that he's saying don't really add up to like what is typically expected in a certain career pathway. So it does sound like he's actually not working like a high level wage job, for example, but I feel like we'll get into further detail about this and we'll find out in part nine. So thank you for watching. I'm really concerned about how this is going to go down. This is going to get worse. I see part 11 and that part is honestly really scary to me because uh, it's very, uh, strictly about talking about the family background thing but we'll we'll, we'll get there when we get there so part nine coming to you very soon take care